Okay, so um, now we're going to move on to something a little bit different. So um, we're going to focus on um, operations that we can take on events. So remember that when we're considering probabilities, we're often considering the probability of some event A, okay, where A is a subset of the sample space. Okay. Now, sometimes we want to be able to combine these events together in different sorts of ways. Okay. There are different sorts of rules, just like there are rules for adding and subtracting numbers. There are rules for the way we combine different sets together and different sorts of operations that we can take to put sets together. Okay, so we'll quickly review those, then mention a few rules associated with those, and then explain how these can be help used to help us do some calculations in probability. Okay, so um, the kinds of operations that are possible rather than times multiply divide are things like the union, the intersection, and the complement of different events. And I'll explain what these are now. Okay, so first of all, let's do the union of two events. So, okay, so for events, and this holds, or even for sets, A and B. Okay, so about two sets A and B, the union okay written which is written as sort of A and then it's kind of U shape and then B okay is the event where A occurs or B occurs. Okay, so we say that an outcome belongs to A or B, if it either belongs to A or it belongs to B, and it could belong to both as well. Okay, all right. Then we have the intersection. Okay, so again, for A and B, the intersection which is written A and this kind of N shape and then B is the event where both A and B occur. Okay, so what I mean is it's a set of outcomes, okay, that both belong to the set A and they also belong to the set B. Alright? Further comment to say is that we can do this for more than one set. We can have the union of A and B with a further set C, or we could have the intersection of A and B with a further set C. Okay, so so it is possible to consider the intersection union of more than one set, in which case we could do things like the union of from I equals 1 to N of different sets AI in just the same way that we sum from I equals 1 to N. Okay? And similarly for the intersection from I equals 1 to N of I N. Okay? The one thing to add I'm sort of implicitly assuming by being able to write that out, they say that there is a set of all the things that contain so this is a set of all the things that can say contained in the sets AI up to A1, A2, all the way up to AN. And these are the things that are contained jointly in all of the sets A1 up to AN. Okay, so it has to belong to A1, has to belong to A2, has to belong to A3, 
as, uh, uh, the outcome has to belong to all of these sets. Okay, in this case, it just needs to belong to one of them. Okay. Right. Um, one thing that I'm implicitly assuming here is that, for example, that A or B or C is also equal to A or B or C. Okay, and similarly for intersections. In other words, it actually doesn't really matter how I go about doing unions. Okay, it's got this nice associativity property, so it doesn't really matter if I do these in any order that I like. Okay, so that's one thing to keep in mind for intersections and unions. Okay. Um, a further thing that we can add uh, is the complement of a set. So um, the complement of the set, so for a set A, which is subset of our sample space, okay, the complement which is written complement like this. Sometimes, occasionally it's written A bar, but that's a slightly less common notation for various reasons. Okay. So the complement will just say is A C for now. Okay. Is all the outcomes in our sample space, but not in A. Okay. Now sometimes to kind of picture these it's useful to draw what you have to call a sort of a Venn diagram. Okay, so just briefly cover what one of those is. Okay. But these are sorts of the three basic building blocks of the way we can go about constructing um, different sorts of sets. Okay. There's more that one can say, but uh, this this is a pretty good start. Actually, I'll tell you what, actually, I'll tell you one more that's sometimes useful, um, which we call the relative complement. Okay. Okay. Um, the relative of so the relative complement of A relative to B which is written A not B, okay. Oh, sorry, complement of A relative to B. I should get this the right way around. Okay. So, is uh, basically all the things which are contained in B that don't include things from A. All right. Is B outcomes in B but not in A. Okay. One thing you can notice, I can actually think about this in terms of the previous things that I had earlier. Okay, so really B not A is all the things in B and we're in the set of things that are not in A. All right, so you can begin to see how actually these um, complement union and intersection are a pretty good way of reaching all the different ways of combining different sets. 
Okay. One good way to visualize um, what's going on here is to draw a Venn diagram. So we've probably covered Venn diagrams before at some point. But essentially what we do is sort of like a bubble chart. So we've got a bubble, okay, which is for A. And we've got a bubble for B, for example. Okay. Now you could imagine here that I could take all of them, all of my omegas, all of my elements, outcomes in my in my sample space and place them in here. Maybe omega 1 goes here, omega 2 is in B. We could have omega 3, which is in the intersection between A and B. Now might be omega 4 is over here. Okay. And number 5, neither belongs to A or B. Okay. So we sort of imagine that we've got these balloons and then within them we could put in all of the um, outcomes in our sample space. Okay. Now I'm going to rub these out for now, but have that picture in your mind that we've sort of placed all of the different outcomes within the relevant boundaries of these two bubbles. Okay, so then we can think of what A and B is. Well, that's the sets of the outcomes that belong to both the set of A things and the set of B things. So that's this space here, all right? And then I could think of all the things that belong. Um, to let's say B but not A and that's this space here okay so it has to belong to B so it has to be in this circle but it has to not belong to A all right so this is A and B this is B not A okay and I could keep going I could look at for example let me just rub out some of this stuff so I could look at A or B, okay? So A or B will correspond to all the things that are in A or they're in B. And that's all of this here, okay? So all the things which are in both of these circles, all right? Then finally we could look at for example, not A, and that's just simply all the things that are not in A. Oopsies. All the things that are not in A. So that's just everything outside of A, this area here. All right. So that would be um, a complement. Okay. So that pretty much covers the basics there. So the thing to keep in mind is that we've got these kind of basic building blocks of intersections, unions and complements. Okay. And a good way to visualize what's going on is by drawing one of these Venn diagrams. Now it only really works for about three different sets. And after that, it gets a bit difficult to draw. But still, you'd be surprised by how many different sort of rules and operations between different events and sets you can get by just simply drawing a Venn diagram and trying to get an idea of what's going on there. So I do recommend if you're at any point uh, not sure about some rule just to draw a Venn diagram and get an idea of what's going on because it's just a simple intuitive way of understanding uh, what's going on. Okay.